You may have heard of OSIRIS-REx from our previous videos, the NASA spacecraft that collected a sample from asteroid Bennu and returned it to Earth in September 2023. That was an amazing feat of science and engineering, and the sample will help us learn more about the origin and evolution of our solar system. But did you know that OSIRIS-REx is not done yet? It has a new name, a new mission, and a new target, Apophis, the asteroid that will come very close to Earth in 2029. Why is Apophis so important to study? What are the challenges and opportunities of this new mission? How will OSIRIS Apex, as it is now called, explore this asteroid and reveal its secrets? In this video, we will answer these questions and more as we follow the journey of OSIRIS Apex to Apophis. The first challenge that OSIRIS Apex faces is how to reach Apophis, which has a very different orbit than Bennu. Apophis orbits closer to the Sun than Bennu and also has a higher inclination, meaning that it is tilted more relative to the plane of the solar system. To get to Apophis, the spacecraft has to fly closer to the Sun than it was designed to do, and also change its orbital plane by using the gravity of Earth and other planets. But, how close to the Sun does OSIRIS Apex have to fly? Well, on January 2nd, 2024, it flew 46.5 million miles from the Sun, which is about half the distance between the Earth and the Sun. That's closer than any other planet except Mercury and Venus. At that distance, the Sun is very bright and very hot, and the spacecraft has to protect itself from the heat and radiation. How does it do that? By using one of its solar arrays as a shield. A solar array is a panel that converts sunlight into electricity, and the spacecraft has two of them. One of them is always facing the sun, and the other one is always facing away from the sun. The one facing the sun acts as a shield, blocking the heat and radiation from reaching the sensitive components of the spacecraft, such as the instruments, the cameras, and the sample return capsule. The one facing away from the sun provides power to the spacecraft, and also helps to radiate the excess heat into space. This is a clever and innovative way to use the solar arrays, but it also has some drawbacks. For one thing, the solar array facing the sun gets very hot and can degrade over time. For another thing, the spacecraft has to rotate very slowly, about once every 10 hours, to keep the shield aligned with the sun. This limits the ability of the spacecraft to communicate with Earth and also to perform scientific observations. But these are the trade-offs that OSIRIS Apex has to make to reach Apophis. And it's not just a one-time thing, the spacecraft will perform six close flybys of the Sun before arriving at Apophis in 2029. Each flyby will save fuel and time for the mission, but also expose the spacecraft to more heat and radiation. So, you might be wondering, why is OSIRIS Apex going through all this trouble to get to Apophis? What is so special about this asteroid? Well. Apophis is one of the most famous and potentially hazardous asteroids in the solar system. It was discovered in 2004. It is a stony asteroid made of silicate and metallic material, and it is about 1,100 feet across, or about the size of three football fields. It orbits the sun every 323 days, and every seven or eight years, it comes very close to Earth. How close? Well, in 2029, Apophis will pass within 19,000 miles of Earth, which is closer than some satellites. That's a very rare and exciting opportunity to study this asteroid up close, and also to see how it changes after its close encounter with Earth. You see, when Apophis passes by Earth, it will experience a strong gravitational pull from our planet, which will alter its orbit, its shape, and its rotation. This could reveal some interesting features and phenomena on the asteroid, such as cracks, landslides, avalanches, and even seismic activity. It could also affect the future trajectory and risk of Apophis, which has a small but non-zero chance of hitting Earth in the next century. This spacecraft will have a unique perspective and access to this asteroid. It will arrive at Apophis in 2029, a few months before the close approach to Earth, and it will stay with it for about a year, observing and measuring its properties and behavior. It will use its instruments and cameras to map the surface, determine the composition, monitor the temperature, and measure the mass and gravity of Apophis. 
It will also try to answer some of the scientific questions that we have about Apophis, such as, how did it form and evolve? What is its internal structure and density? How does it reflect and absorb sunlight? How does it spin and tumble? And how does it interact with Earth and other bodies in the solar system? One of the most exciting and daring aspects of OSIRIS Apex's mission to Apophis is that it will not just observe the asteroid, but also try to manipulate it. How? By firing its engines near the surface and creating a jet of gas that will stir up some rocks and dust on Apophis. This will be similar to what OSIRIS Rex did on Bennu when it collected a sample by touching the surface and blowing nitrogen gas. But this time, OSIRIS Apex will not touch the surface and it will not collect a sample. It will just create a plume of material that will rise above the surface and then fall back down. But why would OSIRIS Apex do that? Well, for two reasons. One is to reveal the composition of the material below the surface, which could be different from the material on the surface. The surface of an asteroid is exposed to space weathering, which is the process of erosion and alteration by sunlight, radiation, and micrometeorites. This can change the color, texture, and chemistry of the surface over time, and make it different from the original material. By stirring up the surface, OSIRIS Apex will expose the fresh material that lies beneath, and compare it with the weathered material on top. This will help us understand how space weathering affects asteroids, and how to interpret their spectral signatures. The other reason is to test the feasibility and effectiveness of a potential asteroid deflection technique which is called kinetic impact. This is the idea of hitting an asteroid with a high-speed projectile, such as a spacecraft or a missile, and changing its orbit and velocity. This could be useful if we ever need to divert an asteroid that is on a collision course with Earth, such as Apophis. By firing its engines near the surface, OSIRIS Apex will impart a small amount of force and momentum to Apophis and slightly change its orbit and rotation. This will not be enough to make a significant difference but it will be enough to measure and analyze. This will provide valuable data and insights for future asteroid exploration and mitigation missions. This experiment is not without risks and challenges though. For one thing, OSIRIS Apex will have to fly very close to the surface of Apophis, about 160 feet or less, and avoid crashing into it. For another thing, the spacecraft will have to deal with the plume of material that it will create and avoid being damaged or contaminated by it. And for a third thing, OSIRIS Apex will have to use its instruments and cameras to observe and measure the results of the experiment and communicate them to Earth. All of this will require precise navigation, coordination, and timing, and a lot of courage and creativity. This is a very exciting and important mission, and we are lucky to have OSIRIS Apex as our eyes and ears on Apophis. We can learn a lot from this asteroid, and also from this spacecraft, and we can also have some fun and adventure along the way. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you will follow the progress and updates of OSIRIS Apex as it continues its journey to Apophis. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like, share, and comment on this video. See you next time.